popular versus required so again the one question to you guys uh, what is the popular automation stack as of now today in market and i know probably uh, most of you might say okay it's, it's probably selenium plus java right uh, now here is always it's a very tricky question right popular versus required sometimes it happens right you join in a place and they are using something very niche in nature uh, which is which is not uh, selenium and java but probably they are using something else probably they are using some very different language which is not so popular and also uh, the ui automation tool which is which is not uh, you can say so much familiar to the community now it always boils down to um, uh, typically what we should go for either we should go for a popular versus the required one and that is where so if i am a i'm a uh, you know quality engineer or uh, you know i'm a person who is who is actually doing automation uh, as an individual contributor sometimes people tend to have or the influences whatever is the popular out there uh, and and that's because it's a fair right because in the market also if you see then there is a lot of opportunities available on that particular tech stack but if you are trying to make a decision for for your uh, automation tech stack uh, where you are actually wanted to finalize what is the best solution for you then just going for the popular tool set might not be uh, the right approach but to consider the entire all the scenario okay what is your uh, and that is something we're also going to touch upon but what i'm just trying to say we have to keep a very uh, you can say uh, deep understanding about what is a popular versus what is a required one for us uh, more often than not people go for a popular options or something that is not required for them and that also creates a challenge down the line lack of product roadmap visibility uh, i'm not sure but i have been in the scenarios but also uh, some of you can also share uh, your own experiences that if you do not have your product roadmap visibility uh, then it becomes a challenge uh, imagine a scenario and again it's it's all real time conditions that you started working on some particular automation tool um, you put your entire effort got the you know foundation framework done started automating scenarios and down the line say after a six months or a year you got to know hey what uh, our entire ui technology is going to get changed and then the tool and the framework what you have selected it, it it's not handy it, it's not seamless to work with the your new set of technical uh, you know uh, stack of of your product then it becomes very challenging then you are talking about the entire new tool and framework to be relooked at the entire migration efforts if you wanted to go to again learning and development becomes a part of it that is one of the very key aspect and element extensive training and development cost and efforts that is something i touched upon because with this um, if people we do not go uh, give a lot of importance of this tool and framework selection process and believe me you would end up spending you know rounds and rounds of uh, you know efforts cost uh, around the extensive training and development of each resources constant uh, attrition this also becomes a major challenge and again uh, this would lead us to training and development now imagine you are actually uh, you know uh, you know zeroing it down on one particular tech stack you are training and developing people but if you are going to have higher set of attrition at your end then you are not going to have a fruitful outcome because then you will end up spending most of your time in, in training and developing this particular resource before you actually start expecting something out of the team so this also becomes a quite a dent uh, you know in, in our automation efforts forced decision i am pretty much using this forced decision words or something that you enter into a setup and and you basically work in a such kind of an environment where decisions has already been taken so either those also can be a historical decisions in 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 nature and those might not be uh, you can say best or correct set of decision and that is where things can also can get dragged in having the overall impact onto the automation side decision ta decisions taken in silos why i am saying you uh, this is that now 
when we talk about the quality engineering efforts and and we all all value uh, the collaborative effort how we deal with okay we do deal with day offs we deal with engineering team product team but sometimes if the task comes to us and since we are the expert of you know zeroing it down to the automation framework uh, and the tool that we are going to use i think always i have also experienced this the more collaboration or involvement you have from your other leaders okay involve people from product involve people from engineering from day ops in your entire decision making process because they are also your equal stakeholders and you also have to work very collaboratively with this set of uh, you know people around you so if they are also able to bring some inputs to the table uh, i think this really adds the value in your entire uh, decision making process uh, and and really it makes you the failure proof uh, in, in near future aiming for the glory shot so this is something you know uh, being a cricket fan this comes from that uh, okay so even though you can get or achieve your target pretty easily or step by step uh, you know you tend to go for a glory shot and uh, in that particular manner you might lose your wicket so automation basically can also come as with a lot of excessive baggage of expectations to the individual to the team quality engineering team and sometimes it has been also been looked upon as solution for all the problems that is something we should refrain from and whenever you are actually planning down the entire automation journey of of your organization or of your product set yourself a very small you know uh, milestones target achievable things over the course of have your entire short term vision and long term vision sorted out i think i think that really helps instead of going okay sometimes it can start hey you know what we just wanted to automate 100% or everything out there in the next quarter that is something can also set up for failure because then we are doing things hastily which might not be good or right necessarily lack of best engineering practices so even though we we are basically uh, you know uh, doing these things uh, from the testing point of view uh, but it's all about engineering so i also consider this entire automation effort as a part of engineering so that's where i emphasize on being a quality engineers uh, so all the engineering practices you know be it coding standard being your you know uh, linting that is a something like a code smell issues uh, keeping your repository optimized minimizing your tech debt all those practices has been championed onto the development side over the years we can actually take the benefit of all those practices and having all those state of art coding standard guidelines practices to be followed even onto the automation side so that your code will be agile nimble uh, it it will be optimized uh, and it will be well maintained at the end of the day uh, but unfortunately uh, sometimes due to due to basically lack of visibility or not involving the engineering team not taking the benefit of the you know framework in place sometimes we end up in a situations that we we end up creating lot of duplicate code lot of code which is not scalable in, na in nature um, and 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 lot of technical debt even onto the automation side as well and then your uh, you know maintenance becomes becomes a nightmare so at one point of time you are dealing with your script failures but also you are dealing with the maintenance of your automation repositories